joining us this hour. In what way is Mitt Romney like an Etch-A-Sketch? Is there a concern that the pressure from Santorum and Gingrich might force the governor to tack so far to the right it would hurt him with moderate voters in the general election? Well, I think you hit a reset button uh, for the fall campaign. Everything changes. It's almost like an Etch-A-Sketch. You can kind of shake it up and we start all over again. This is uh, an Etch-A-Sketch. Ed has one. I have one. I was always really bad at this. Uh, Etch-A-Sketch is made by the Ohio Art Company. Uh, it's an American company that's been around since 1908. First in Archbold, Ohio, then in Bryan, Ohio. When the company was 40-something years old in the 1950s, they were approached by a French engineer who had designed something called a telecran, or le crane magique. Ohio Art bought the telecran, they developed it, they renamed it the Etch-A-Sketch, and to the delight of people everywhere in the world who delight in drawing curving lines only by virtue of great concentration and exceptional hand-eye coordination, an American toy phenomenon was born. From the late 1950s until um, the year 2000, Etch-A-Sketch was manufactured by workers in Bryan, Ohio. The workers were in a union. Uh, they were paid the grand sum of about $9 per hour to make the Etch-A-Sketch. That's who made this until the year 2000 when the Etch-A-Sketch company outsourced their work to China. Instead of nine bucks an hour, the Chinese workers got paid 24 cents an hour. They had a minimum work week of 84 hours per week. Now that was bad even for that part of China and the workers there went on strike to try to get the Chinese minimum wage and specifically to try to get more meat, more meat, more protein in their food allotment. They lost on that and the strike organizers got fired. Confronted by this New York Times article with the facts about how their product was being made, uh, the Etch-A-Sketch company basically said they felt bad about it, but they felt their hand was forced because of price pressure from their major buyers, including Toys R Us. Uh, Toys R Us, for the record, is now owned by Bain Capital. So? Bonjour. Je m'appelle Miss Romney. So, Mitt Romney, like an Etch-A-Sketch, or as it used to be called, the Telecran, Mitt Romney, um, like an Etch-A-Sketch, speaks French. Mitt Romney, like an Etch-A-Sketch, also has a documented history of firing American workers and sending their jobs to other countries that have really horrible working conditions. But most importantly, Mitt Romney, like an Etch-A-Sketch, has a history of erasing his old supposed principles when it's convenient and writing new ones to meet new political needs. Which is why this Etch-A-Sketch gaffe by his campaign today is one of the most, if not the most, significant gaffes of the entire campaign. And which is why Mr. Romney's rivals Newt Gingrich and Rick Santorum were both out on the campaign trail today brandishing made in China etch a sketches. And which is why everyone from those Republican candidates to the Democratic Party and Democratic super PACs are already all over this thing. He said it's like an etch a sketch. He said you just take, turn it over, and shake it. And then you start all over. I was a severely conservative Republican governor. You have to stand for something that lasts longer than this. People under people aren't stupid. The Mitt Romney is an etch-a-sketch etch claim uh, made by his campaign today. The claim that uh, the far right, remember the question he was asked here. It's, it's the claim that the far right positions Mr. Romney has taken in the primary can easily just be erased and forgotten and replaced with whatever they need to be replaced with for the general election. That is important in this campaign. I'm not a person who jumps on the gaff of the moment, but I feel like this is sort of a watershed thing. That is exactly the criticism that Mr. Romney's Republican rivals have thrown against him since he has been running for president. And I mean, it's not just this year. They made this same claim in 2008 when he disavowed so many of his previous positions to run as a 2008 model year conservative. And they have made it this year as he's disavowed even those 2008 positions to run as a 2012 model year conservative. 
John Huntsman made the accusation early on this year when he called Mr. Romney a perfectly lubricated weather vane. Remember that? I mean, the Etch-a-Sketch thing today makes exactly the same point without the awkwardness of a lubricant reference and with the added bonus that the Romney campaign itself admitted at this time. He hit a reset button uh, for the fall campaign. Everything changes. It's almost like an Etch-a-Sketch. You can kind of shake it up and we start all over again. Is this admission by the Romney campaign enough to make Mr. Romney lose the Republican primary to one of these other guys? Honestly, probably not. I mean, it is possible. It is possible, never say never, but the smart money still says no. Mr. Romney has about half the delegates he needs in order to win the nomination. And frankly, and more importantly, he's got the wherewithal to get the rest of the delegates he needs, mostly because these other three guys really obviously do not have the wherewithal to get those delegates for themselves. And because of that, the Etch-a-Sketch moment today is maybe more important as a general election matter than it is in the primary. It may be too late to upend Mr. Romney's prospects of winning the Republican nomination, particularly against the kind of competition he's got. But how can someone with this reputation win the general election? Because in the general election, it's not just a question of whether you are making yourself seem marginally more or less conservative than you might really be in order to please the primary voters of each particular state, one at a time, one after the other. In the general election, it is different. In the general election, you don't have to be any one ideological thing in order to win over the country. But you have to not be a liar. Here's how well Smith Romney is like an Etch-a-Sketch. It's not just speaking French. It is not just outsourcing jobs to China. It is not just fudging his conservatism. It's fudging everything all the time. And this is hard to talk about in the day-to-day -day news context because there are such low expectations for politicians being truthful and because the word lie is both underused and overused to the point where everybody's a little tetchy about it. But the degree to which Mr. Romney lies all the time about all sorts of stuff and doesn't care when he gets caught is maybe the single most notable thing about his campaign. It started in his very first speech, his kickoff announcement speech this year. He lied. When he took office, the economy was in recession, and he made it worse. That's a lie. That is a lie. I, oh, Mr. Romney claims, others say, the response from, no, that's a lie. The economy started getting better almost immediately after President Obama's Recovery Act became law, his first policies to deal with the economy, right? But Mitt Romney still says this all the time. He did not cause this recession, but he made it worse. He didn't create the recession, but he made it worse and longer. When he took office, the economy was in recession, and he made it worse. Finally, after Mr. Romney kept saying this over and over again, an NBC News reporter asked Mr. Romney why he kept saying President Obama made the economy worse when President Obama, in point of fact, did not make the economy worse. How can you continue to say that things are worse when they really aren't worse? I didn't say that things are worse. Yeah, you did. Mr. Romney lied about the economic record of the country, and then when pressed, he lied about his lie. Mr. Romney also lies easily about himself. Uh, here he is, for example, at a recent debate lying about his professional background and why he quit after one term as Massachusetts governor. That would be about me. I was trying to help get the state in as best shape as I possibly could left the, uh, the world of politics, went back into business. Left the world of politics? That is a lie. Mr. Romney did leave the Massachusetts governor's office in January 2007, but then literally one month later, he launched his first presidential campaign in February of 2007. He didn't leave the world of politics and go back into business. That's a lie. And moreover, that is an unnecessary, unforced, but apparently very easily told lie for Mr. Romney. And speaking of Mr. Romney's one term in Massachusetts, here's what he told an Ohio audience recently about taking his Massachusetts-based health care policy national. Early on, we were asked, is that what you've done in Massachusetts something you'd have the entire government do, the federal government do? I said, no, from the very beginning. No, this is designed for our state and our circumstance. Again, that is a lie. Mr. Romney said the country should do what he did in Massachusetts. Here, for example, is an op-ed that he wrote in USA Today. Can we zoom in on the headline there? Can we zoom in? Oh, 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 President Obama could learn a thing or two about health care reform from Massachusetts. 
So says Mitt Romney. Mr. Romney has in fact argued repeatedly that he supported a national health care plan based on what he did in Massachusetts, including specifically the individual mandate that he now decries. He may find this politically inconvenient now, but that is the truth and it's easily accessible by anybody with the Google. And he still lies about it all the time, over and over again. This is not a normal amount of politician lying. Mr. Romney lies about himself. He lies about the president. He lies about policy. He lies about everything. It is beyond a normal amount of politician lying. While we've got 15 trillion of debt, he, he said, look, I, I'm going to put another trillion of debt for Obamacare. That is Mitt Romney lying. <laughs> Every independent estimate, including multiple analyses from the Congressional Budget Office, which is not a partisan thing, shows that the president's health reform law actually cuts the deficit by hundreds of billions of dollars. Now, you cannot like it for other reasons, but Mr. Romney says all the time that health reform adds to the deficit, when in point of fact, it cuts the deficit. Mitt Romney lies about it all the time. He said he'd cut the deficit in half. He's doubled it. He's doubled it. Yeah, no. Un unless Mr. Romney has forgotten what double means, again, he is lying. When President Obama took office, the deficit was about $1.3 trillion. Last year, it was $1.29 trillion. This year, it's on track to be, at uh, be about $1.1 trillion. You know, if a number is going down, it's not doubling. It's going down. And anybody who says it's doubling is lying. Mr. Romney, you said President Obama cut Medicare benefits. That's a lie. You said the administration raised corporate tax rates. That's a lie. You said President Obama has not signed any trade deals, which would be news to officials in South Korea and Colombia and Panama, with whom the president has signed trade deals. You said Americans are the only people on earth who put our hand over our heart during the playing of the national anthem. That is not, not, not only a lie, it's absurd, and it's weird you would even say it. What do you do with a candidate for president who lies about even the stupid stuff? I can't trust him to tell the truth about what he advocated. You said of Mitt Romney, somebody who will lie to you to get to be president will lie to you when they are president. I have to ask you, are you calling Mitt Romney a liar? Yes. You're calling Mitt Romney a liar? Well, you seem shocked by it. I, 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 yes. If a man's dishonest to obtain a job, he'll be dishonest on the job. It's one thing to look at a candidate's rivals and say, ah, they're calling him a liar. That's one thing we call each other in politics now. But I sort of feel like these guys meant for us to be taking it seriously. For those who followed the 2012 race closely, and perhaps even not so closely, there are two broad narratives surrounding Mitt Romney. Uh, first, he is uh, an out-of-touch elitist who got rich by laying off American workers. Uh, second, he is a world-class flip-flopper who's radically changed his entire political persona several times. In both those cases, he is an etch-a-sketch guy, right? But the shake everything up and invent your own reality side of him has an even more serious implication. He lies all the time, really easily. He says things that are not true with unnerving frequency, arguably more than any modern candidate for major office, and there are a lot of creeps among them. Some dishonesty in national American politics is frankly routine. It's too bad, but that's true. Romney-style dishonesty is a sight to behold. It's different. He's bending the curve. No matter what your political stripes, Americans deserve better in a campaign this important. There are enormous differences between the two major political parties. And the voters will have a clear choice between the parties' competing visions and policies for 2012. There's no reason that the whole country can't, in this next election, have a great debate about our collective future. But that only happens when there are candidates representing the parties who respect Americans enough to be honest with us. And at least for now, the man who is most likely to win the Republican presidential nomination really seems unwilling to do so and untroubled by it. He seems to think he can get away with routine, almost casual dishonesty, in part because the rest of us calling somebody a liar either feels cheap or it feels somehow beneath the level of a presidential campaign. Frankly, it ought to be beneath the level of a presidential campaign. But what is more radically inappropriate on a systemic institutional level for us as Americans is that a man who may well take the oath of office in 10 months is choosing to get to that podium on a foundation of utterly unashamed, unprecedented deceit.